Konbanwa, and good evening to those tuning in from Houston and across the US, and good morning or ohayo gozaimasu to our friends from Japan. I'm Patsy Brown, Executive Director of Japan America Society of Houston, and I have the pleasure of welcoming you to the 2022 Japan Currents Houston Conference. As we begin the conference, our thoughts are with our friends in Japan as they continue to face challenges and the damage from the powerful earthquake that hit the Northeast region of the country last week. Japan, may you continue to stay safe, warm and with power. 2022 marks the Japan America Society of Houston's seventh year of bringing together experts from Japan and the US to examine the impact of US-Japan relations on Houston Harris County, and Texas. And while we wish we were gathering with you in person at the Petroleum Club of Houston today, we are grateful to have this opportunity to explore US-Japan energy ties with you virtually. Joining us tonight to recognize our sponsors, partners, and speakers is Japan America Society of Houston President Laird Duran. Laird, the screen is yours. Thank you, and thank you all for joining us this evening to explore Japan's role in building a global hydrogen framework. Tonight's event would not be possible without the generous support of the Embassy of Japan in Washington, DC, and the National Association of Japan America Societies. Special thanks also goes to UH Energy and University of Houston for serving as a program partner the 2022 Japan Currents Houston Conference is taking place as international energy security and the global momentum to decarbonize is increasing the focus on the unique and many roles of hydrogen. As countries begin to make big bets on emerging energy technologies, Houston is also assessing whether it can play a unique role in the hydrogen economy. Joining us tonight to provide expert insights into the hydrogen economy are from Tokyo, Eji Ohira, Director General, Fuel Cell and Hydrogen Office with NIDO, which is the New Energy and Industrial Technology Development Organization in Japan. From here in Houston, we have Joe Capello, Chairman and CEO of the Iwatani Corporation of America. And graciously agreeing to moderate tonight's conversation is Dr. Alan Rossiter, Executive Director of University of, Houston, of UH Energy, University of Houston, and organizer of UH Energy's The Hydrogen Economy Program. Before I turn the program over to Dr. Rossiter, I'd like to remind the audience that our speakers will be taking questions later in the program. Please use the Q&A tab at the bottom of your Zoom screen to submit questions. With that, Dr. Rossiter, the screen is all yours. Thank you. My apologies, it usually helps to unmute. <laughs> Thank you so much, Led. Um, as we all know, Japan is a highly industrialized country with a severe lack of hydrocarbon resources that sees multiple values in using hydrogen, including energy security, industrial competitiveness, and carbon emissions reduction. In 2017, Japan unveiled its basic hydrogen strategy, becoming the first country to adopt a national hydrogen framework. The importance of hydrogen was reaffirmed in Japan's green growth strategy released in 2020. And in 2021, the government has doubled down on hydrogen, adding specific action plans to priority sectors. So how is hydrogen helping Japan reach net zero goals? Well, here to provide insight from NIDO, Japan's new economic and industrial technology development organization, is Eiji Ohira. And by the way, uh, he also goes by Eddie. So Eddie, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandro, for the introduction. A very good evening, everyone. My name is Eiji or Eddie Ohira, I represent responsible for the hydrogen fuel cell on the program. 
uh, we are NATO is Japan's largest funding agency and the ministry of economy, trade, and industry. Well, hydrogen is one of and the promising field for us. It is a great pleasure for me to join the Japan current Houston workshop today. Well, there is a many uh, hydrogen movement passed in the 40 years, and there is movement in the 1980, 1990, and the 2000. And also now, expectation for the hydrogen are increasing the toward the realization of carbon neutrality. Well, and uh, <clears throat> the different in the past and the current movement on hydrogen, there is a huge uh, political commitment the over the world. And still, and the investment to the hydrogen is moving. And however, the hydrogen facility will not be realized immediately. We cannot realize on tomorrow or then the next year. So we need to, to continue the working on it over the long term. Well, uh, today I would like to introduce how we Japan have been promoting hydrogen. Okay, and uh, let, me, let me start on uh, our, our background of Japan's current energy situation. Well, uh, thanks to the field in depth scheme, our Japan renewables increasing every year, and it reached 10% of the total uh, primary energy or 20% of the total uh, electricity. That is still low level. We are highly uh, fossil fuel dependent country. Uh, um, and fossil fuel dependency reached 85%, and almost all of the fossil fuel are coming from the outside Japan. Well, from the perspective of the improving energy self-sufficiency and combating climate change, it is necessary decreasing the fossil fuel dependency or increasing the renewable. But on the other hand, uh, carbon dioxide emissions from the energy sector for the your light side, light side, uh, sorry, light, light here. Well, <clears throat> energy transformation, including the power sector, the, the count a huge amount, 40 plus, over the 40 percent, but only uh, 40 percent. We just think, we are thinking about it, uh, uh, tackling the crime, uh, climate change with carbon neutrality. We also uh, promote decarbonization at the other sector, like uh, transportation, the industry, or commercial, or some energy, et cetera, et cetera. So, and the renewable is not a single solution. Uh, we need to integrate other solutions like uh, carbon capture storage, energy conservation, and the hydrogen is part of this uh, our solution. Uh, <clears throat> At, uh, uh, to Alan Sam, they mentioned that you know, we already have the hydrogen policy, namely by, uh, high, basic hydrogen strategies in the compiled you know, almost 40, four years ago, in December 2017, with the leadership of the former Prime Minister and Shinzo Abe. Well, uh, this is a strategy that summarizes the vision of 2050 and the action plan and the goals for 2030, such a number of the fuel cell vehicle, hydrogen being stationed or the station and fuel cell. The point of this strategy is to formulate with the participation or contribution for industry, government, academia, all the stakeholders. But uh, each year, just a, a high, basic hydrogen strategy is based on our past at the target. Past target means minus 80% degrees by 2050. Now we have the new target for net zero by 2050. So uh, this is the hydrogen policy, hydrogen strategy may be revised as soon as possible, maybe in, in this year, as soon as possible maybe this year. This is our new policy, and as also, this is also Alan mentioned that uh, net zero by 2050. Uh, to achieve um, this uh, our goal, on the Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry to formulate green growth strategy. It's a con including the uh, development carbon innovation uh, green sorry green innovation funds. It's approximately in the U.S. 19 billion uh, to accelerate well uh, this related technology. Well, I did this find several hydrogen related projects and they started for large scale hydrogen transportation, I will talk later, and hydrogen power generation. 
Renewable Hydrogen, the Maritime Application, the Steel Production, etc. I just mentioned about uh, the <clears throat> hydrogen power generation was allocated to Japan, the 2030 energy mix. It is the first time when the hydrogen appeared on an energy, Japan's energy mix. It means that Japan government recognized the hydrogen would be the energy option with reality. Well, and this figure shows the direction of our hydrogen effort. And the target is to reduce the cost of the hydrogen to less than $2 per kilogram in 2050. Uh, we will proceed with the effort to expand the amount of the hydrogen utilization in the future. On the hydrogen supply side, uh, we are now uh, to, to maximize utilization for our, our, our current existing source in the fossil fuel based hydrogen production or byproduct hydrogen production. From the 2030, we also utilize hydrogen from overseas and the domestic renewable hydrogen. Well, on the utilization side or demand side, yes, yeah, so we are for transportation, we have the fuel cell passenger vehicle, the fuel cell buses. We we'll try to expand in a fuel cell or commercial vehicle, like a heavy duty truck, medium duty truck. Uh, we expand it in the fuel cell uh, to, to maritime application around the 2030 in the future. And uh, we're focusing on develop the um, uh, to, to aviation. We have power generation, we already have the uh, technology for or stationary fuel cell or, or small scale hydrogen gas turbine for the distributed energies. But uh, in the 2030, uh, we have like to, to commercialize uh, to large scale hydrogen power generation gas turbines for the hydrogen power station. We have to meet Japan's and uh, uh, to energy mix in 2030. Well, the industry is quite uh, big challenges because uh, um, more con con <clears throat> well, and the requirement of the cost is of the hydrogen is quite high. Uh, so um, we are working for the demonstration over the 20 or 30 years, uh, 20 years, and uh, we try to realize and the utilization of hydrogen and the industry side on around 20, 2050. Well, in any case, uh, the quality development is quite important, especially next 10 years to the 20, 20, 30, uh, we will uh, actively invest in the technological development in order to gain a lot of the technical knowledge. Well, this here I show the current status of the hydrogen fuel application. When well, we just behind the United States, but uh, we have the 6,500 fuel cell passenger vehicle and 100 uh, fuel cell buses many in the Tokyo <coughs> running in, in the Tokyo regularly. Well, we have the 160 hydrogen fuel station in, in, in Japan nationwide. In our first and the fuel application for residential fuel cell, we already had 400,000 units. Well, and next, I'd like to talk about our, our research and the development and the demonstration project on the hydrogen fuel cell. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is our current budget for a fuel cell and the hydrogen along the, the technology we allocate for all Two hundred ten million U.S. dollars for 20, uh, 2021 and the Japan budget budget year. I was assigned this position in 2013, uh, over eight years ago, or the nine years ago. Uh, compared to the uh, uh, to uh, 2013 budget, just a two uh, hundred ten million U.S. dollar is kind, kind of triple. It was uh, the seventeen million uh, U.S. dollars for uh, past ten years. Well, uh, this uh, 210 million US dollar is at uh, one fifteen percent of the total uh, to total uh, net of the budget. So you can see that net of the also forecasting on the hydrogen net recognize that hydrogen is most missing. Um, <clears throat> our activity is quite wide from the hydrogen production, the store, and the transport, and the distribution, and the utilization, the fuel cell hydrogen fuel station. Or any other technologies or basic research, applied research, demonstration, etc. Et and then, and also 50% uh, 
uh, our budget is allocated for hydrogen energy system. The, this included the hydrogen field gas turbine power generation, international hydrogen transport, and the part of that. Well, and this is a kind of snapshot of our project. And um, <clears throat> first one is uh, uh, distributed hydrogen power generation developed by the Kawasaki heavy industry. We have developed the one megawatt hydrogen with natural gas, geothermal gas turbine over the five years ago. Uh, to uh, still uh, this system and then learning, and we try to improve in the technologies, including the efficiency of the uh, uh, this power generation, hydrogen power generation. And the one megawatt class and with uh, a success. So now our next plan is the scale up uh, to 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 the thirty and the megawatt. Well, and next slide is a uh, 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 kind of topic for the hydrogen international transportation. We already have developed the uh, small but the world for us to beautify the hydrogen tanker and the uh, hydrogen the handling and the, the system at fault, like loading, unloading, liquid hydrogen, that's the liquid hydrogen storage and any other of plants. The first test voyage from the Jap between the Japan and, uh, and the Australia had already carried and we the cross it successfully. After returning from the Australia and the safely at the end of the last month and the various uh, technological data such as the boiler plate and uh, any, any other technical data was collected and uh, verified. And uh, next next journey maybe starting in this year and in this year. But uh, we are learning in the testing and this technology. Also, the working for or developing the new regulation you know, for uh, safety, liquid hydrogen transportation. It, this uh, applied for the international maritime organization. And uh, <clears throat> next topic is uh, uh, battery gas. We are working on the particle application of battery gas technology. And for example, the performance of the water electrolysis, and we collect in the analyze data on the overall efficiency of the durability of the 10 megawatt alkali water electrolysis, 1.5 megawatt and PEM electrolysis. We also verify the operational technology of the entire system, hydrogen production, the store, the distribution. And so that we can provide in the balancing power. It is one of the value uh, for or, or, or from the uh, party gas system. Well, it's, it's also necessary to acquire uh, the social acceptance of the spreading of the hydrogen. In, in, still, in, even in Japan, understanding the hydrogen uh, is not enough. For the reason we are pro uh, producing the, uh, proceeding with the balance effort but to deepen understanding of the hydrogen from all the, from the alternate people. This is an example and uh, uh, it's a hydrogen production in the Fukushima in the utilized in the various place in, in, in Japan. And the typical example is the uh, Olympic uh, Paralympic frame is the first time using the hydrogen as a fuel for an Olympic frame. In addition, we also are providing our hydrogen to the, to the list, hydrogen list here. And Toyota announced that they developed the hydrogen powered engine uh, to, uh, to car, um, but they, they provide a future, future option. And uh, it uh, has been the future it, in so many media and, and TV. Well, <clears throat> Well, uh, NEDO is uh, uh, conducting the developing the localized hydrogen utilization model. Uh, this figure is an overview of our current demonstrative activities at the port of Los Angeles in California. From the viewpoint of the air pollution control, uh, not only climate change, every electrification of the port equipment and track has become an important issue. And the battery would be the option, and but there would be a limitation due to the learning time and the charging time. Uh, through the demonstration and the several fuel cell applications, such as top handler, LTZ, and cabbage track, 
integrated with the hydrogen production and the distribution infrastructure, uh, we'd like to, to create a potential of the hydrogen fuel cell and identify the barrier uh, to disseminate and the hydrogen application. So lastly, I will talk about introduce our new project. There are projects that uh, utilize the Green Innovation Fund I mentioned in, in earlier, and what uh, established to support technological development towards the realization of carbon neutrality. One is in the hydrogen supply chain project, Japan plan to import hydrogen in the future, and from starting in the 2030, and uh, uh, we proceed to uh, light sc uh, scaling up of various equipment necessary for this purpose. For example, uh, we are aiming for a liquefied hydrogen carrier ship scale up to 10 times or more uh, compared to the current level. Well, hydrogen power generation, we already uh, to develop the hydrogen combustor, but the uh, so next step for introducing it to the actual hydrogen, uh, actual gas turbine at the power station. Well, we plan to in the 300 billion Japanese yen in these activities and contribute to Japan target with 1% of total electricity in the 2030 with ammonia power generation. Well, and the second project is uh, to, to scaling up and, uh, and the party gas and the technologies. Well, regarding the water electrolysis, we already de uh, developed the 10 megawatts and uh, the several megawatt class. But uh, we proceed with the development with a view to the 100 megawatt scale. In terms of utilization, we plan to use it as a raw material for the chemicals such as ammonia and the methanol, et cetera, et cetera, and utilize it for providing the thermal energy to, to promote decarbonization at the industry sectors. We will proceed with the development of the system integration, hydrogen production, the store and the utilization. Yeah. <clears throat> we will invest 70, uh, 70 billion Japanese in this project. The purpose of this project to accelerate the social implementation of technology, we will proceed with the last uh, scale up and the verification in the actual environment. Okay, it's um, enough time and I do conclude my presentation. Well, um, um, to hydrogen, it's uh, not a single solution, um, but a key technology for the carbon, neut carbon neutrality, the other carbon neutrality. So the Japan has been strongly promoting the hydrogen, but then uh, you just started the market penetration and uh, like small, a very small number, but uh, we try to, to improve Increasing the number of or need to enhance the application, diversity of the application. Well, our goal is not only producing the uh, fuel cell vehicle and the fuel cell application, but also developing developing the low carbon energy system. Well, and the scaling up integration. It's a keyword to developing the new uh, energy system. Well, there are the many chances to, to collaborate in, in Japan, the uh, US, US and the Japan. I suppose the, uh, this is a good starting point for the future, our future collaboration. Anyway, and I'd like to, to finish my presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Shohiro san. Uh, that was a very good uh, overview of where Japan is today and, and the plans you have for the future. And it, it is a very exciting, uh, plan you do have there. So we look forward to seeing how that develops over time. Thank you so much. So now to provide more detail on how Japanese industry is leading efforts to build an international hydrogen supply chain uh, is uh, Iwatani Corporation uh, of America Chairman and CEO, uh, Joe Capello. So Joe, over to you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Roster. And, uh, uh, Thank you, Ohira-san, for a very interesting topic. Uh, very nice to see you again. Okay, I um, hope you can see my screen. Yeah, got it, thanks. Okay, and uh, it should be going on to screensaver here to for the folks that uh, are like me, need it a little bigger. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here, and thank you so much for uh, 
this wonderful opportunity to allow us to uh, talk about Iwatani, uh, talk about the hydrogen community, and and also um, express a desire to collaborate with our with our colleagues uh, from Japan who are doing business here in the U.S. Um, I'd also like to share that the um, the support from METI and Neto and Jetro have been instrumental for Iwatani Corporation of America um, getting started. Um, now, while I'm uh, noted as a Houston person, which I am, I'm actually in California uh, at our other headquarters uh, for our, our hydrogen business. And while hydrogen is massive in Texas and there's massive use of it today, the transition in Texas is, is going to also be quite exciting. A lot of companies are starting in California because of incentive programs that are in place. And it seems to be a pretty solid incubator for companies to um, initiate the transportation uh, focus to decarbonize uh, that market. Uh, there's no doubt there'll be transitions to other states and it's happening quite rapidly. If you attended the Sarah uh, meetings that occurred in the last couple of weeks, the enthusiasm for hydrogen has never been higher. Uh, we really are at a hydrogen moment, and Texas has a, a, a tremendous opportunity to leverage uh, itself. But I'm here today going to talk a little bit about California and what we've what we've done uh, there, a little bit about the market, and then also uh, talk about our growth story and how that might be uh, leveraged by other companies. And then also um, some thoughts around opportunities for how other Japanese companies might either penetrate the U.S. market or continue to collaborate. Very quickly, Iwatani Corporation of America uh, has been in uh, operations for more than 40 years. And we have traditionally been part of um, uh, Iwatani uh, Corporation, Japan, by being a trading business, like many companies that uh, developed, Japanese companies that developed in the United States. Our, um, our business units are the energy division, which mainly consists of the export of LPG to Japan from the ship channel. Also, if you've been to um, a uh, uh, home of your colleagues from Japan, you likely have had uh, dinner or, uh, or some type of a food cooked on one of our stoves. And um, I'm very popular when I give those out at Christmas time to uh, clients. Um, and banana flambe and omelets, uh, notwithstanding. We also are in the industrial gases industry. Um, we acquired a company uh, two and a half years ago, a specialty gases company in Reno. And we're leveraging that to grow, to service the semiconductor and electronic gases market. There's a tremendous amount of investment that's going on in the US um, for semiconductor growth and we're participating in that. We have a materials division that has all sorts of advanced materials, including um, products that go into your iPhone, your iPad. And, um, the favorite topic of the day, hydrogen. Um, that business started from zero. We uh, started that business from scratch back in 2019. I'll talk a little bit about the evolution. And um, in just two and a half years, it's become almost 20% of our sales uh, in the US. On the right, there's a bar chart that shows um, a step-by-step -step process for how we anticipate to grow through investments in hydrogen fueling stations. And this is all in California. These are stations that we will own. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about how that plays into the strategy and how, we, how we're participating. We certainly see the opportunity for advancement of investment in hydrogen stations across the country. But for the moment, because of incentive programs, as I mentioned, California is the place where we wanna focus. So quick snapshot from where are we starting? Just I'll run through this. I won't read everything, but um, as Ohira-san uh, shared how many cars are in Japan, there's about twice as many in uh, the United States. And of the 12, almost 13,000 fuel cell vehicles, most of them are in California. And most of them are Toyota Mirai's. Um, there have been um, 
uh, other cars, uh, Honda, for example, uh, had a clarity. Uh, they have uh, withdrawn that product from the market, but they're uh, talking about coming back with uh, a new platform. And Hyundai uh, Light Duty as well with the Nexo uh, vehicle uh, is, uh, is in California. There are um, just under 100 buses. By the end of this year, we expect to be over 100 buses in California. Um, as of yesterday, there were 51 new stations. Uh, we crossed the 50 market because Iwatani commissioned and turned on its uh, newest station in California, and we're number 51. We, um, we also, in California, have uh, about 11 stations that are in various stages of construction. Of those 11, Iwatani is six of them. And uh, there's also stations that are in uh, permitting, uh, 29, and we're part of that uh, as well. Overall, uh, when everything is constructed, there should be about 122 stations uh, in, uh, in the next couple of years, by 2025 or so. The uh, map on the right shows where everything is. Not surprising, Northern California, centered around San Francisco, Los Angeles, down to San Diego, pretty obvious places where the concentration of population is. And uh, if you really dive into the circles, um, to the zip codes, it'll make a lot of sense by the demographics of why the vehicles are, are where they are. But the idea is to move beyond that. And the goal, and it's quite ambitious, a thousand uh, stations in California by 2030. I can tell you we are not even close to being on track. And a lot of that, um, I can tell you, is not because of capital constraints. It's, it takes a long time to build a station in California. The permitting process is politely uh, challenging. Um, and uh, it is a contributing factor to why it's uh, slowing. But the demand and the interest for the Mirai has been off the charts. The infrastructure just hasn't been able to keep up with it. So why did Iwatani focus on coming to the United States for hydrogen in California? Well, we happen to be one of the largest uh, hydrogen um, fueling station cost, uh, companies in Japan. We also happen to be 100% of the liquid hydrogen production in Japan. And with that skills and with that position and with all of that years and years of knowledge, we wanted to leverage that to other markets. We are focused on areas like Australia, of course, a lot of companies are, but in the US, we looked at a lot of different things, but I wanted to just synthesize it down to a couple of things. This, these two charts, um, how much, how many vehicles, thousand vehicles, and how much demand for hydrogen. If you believe those charts, and we happen to believe it's somewhere in between, the demand for hydrogen is going to be pretty exceptional. The hockey stick curve is not unlike many emerging markets, and it's one that we feel that we can bring something of value to the party. We didn't have to wrestle our way into the market. We showed up in California, prepared to introduce ourselves, and I was overwhelmed by the welcome that we received from the California um, state government, from the California Air Resources Board, California Energy Commission, the governor's office. Before we could even introduce who we were, they were telling us who we were. There was a lot of research done, most of the world knows that Japan has been an innovator in hydrogen, and we were welcomed with open arms to come in and uh, transfer technology, help, and we were, we were quite blessed by the uh, reception. The, uh, the fact of the matter is Iwatani's reputation and, and all of the companies that are here uh, from Japan have tremendous reputations that are, are highly supported, and it really helped ICA launch its business. It also helped the fact that we are members, uh, early members of the Hydrogen Council, which is a CEO-based organization, and it's very substantially well-regarded. And if you just look at who's a member of the Hydrogen Council and the commitment by the CEOs, if you had any doubt that Hydrogen uh, wasn't having a moment, look at, the, look at the membership and it'll help. And it also um, has been well-established that uh, Iwatani, like most of our uh, colleagues from, from Japan, other companies, we have a dramatic uh, commitment to CO2 uh, reduction, carbon emission reduction. I'm going to uh, pick up the pace here and just wanted to share that 
over uh, the last couple of years, Iwatani has come a pretty long way. And it isn't because uh, we knew exactly what to do. I can share with you, we've bumped into a lot of walls um, and I have the bruises to prove it. But the reality is we have a lot of help uh, from the community, the hydrogen community, the states, and other Japanese companies that have helped us uh, along the way. Um, we started our, our, our entry into the US market with an acquisition. And I'm highlighting a few things because at the end, I'm gonna wrap up with how can companies in, from Japan penetrate the market? And we're giving some examples, just sharing some of the examples of what we tried and, and how uh, it's helped us. So we started off with acquiring uh, four established stations from a company called Lindy, liquid, four liquid stations in California, and it gave us the base of operation. And while these were very early generation stations, um, at the time they were built, about five years ago, they were state of the art. This technology uh, is emerging and developing quite rapidly. After five years, it's, it's, it's old news. Um, but the information that we gained and the entrance into the market that we gathered by being in, by acquiring these four stations has leveraged us uh, in, in ways uh, quite substantially. There's a picture here of our chairman, Makino-san, uh, being welcomed by Patty Monahan was uh, one of the vice chairs of the California Energy Commission, along with the um, uh, mayor from uh, West Sacramento at one of our grand reopenings. The welcoming and the support for getting, uh, for growing in this community has been substantial. I'd like to also uh, highlight in the middle on the top, we announced in November of 2020, a collaboration with Toyota Motor Corporation to build uh, seven new hydrogen stations, world scale, hydrogen stations with the latest and greatest technology. We um, coincidentally yesterday turned on the first one uh, from that. So we went from news to reality um, since that time. And it, if it wasn't for the help of Toyota and helping us get established, um, it would have been a lot harder. So we're quite grateful uh, to Toyota for that opportunity. We also had an opportunity to participate in a, grow, in a program that uh, is sponsored by California in the California Clean Transportation Program. Um, it's a grant funding opportunity. And Iwatani was one of three companies that was awarded um, a substantial amount of, of money to be able to build out uh, the infrastructure in uh, California. So it was a very substantial support mechanism for um, capital subsidies to, to grow. We also were invited to be um, the, the chairperson of the California Fuel Cell Partnership which I, I highly uh, recommend that folks uh, join as a mechanism for meeting other companies and, and getting up the learning curve um, and, and opportunities for collaboration that are tremendously. And then just uh, last month, we announced a, a partnership with Chevron, which is the, one of the largest energy companies in the US to build out 30 additional stations in California, um, which will uh, begin immediately. So I'll uh, just quickly, uh, again, Iwatani, uh, we started with four stations. We have plans to build 20 of our own. After this, we'll be in the top three in just a short period of time in California. Um, we're, we're, like a lot of folks, getting ready for the heavy duty market, which is going to be a substantial consumption of, of hydrogen and, and enable lots of other uh, markets. We believe that being vertically integrated like we are in uh, Japan is a model that we should replicate uh, in uh, the United States. And that means production, distribution, and uh, fueling. Um, I mentioned the other parts, and I didn't want to leave out the hydrogen hubs. The hydrogen hubs has gained a lot of enthusiasm. A lot of states are combi combining forces to go after what the DOE will be awarding. And we are um, working with some folks that uh, are leading the development. We tend to not be one of the massive leaders um, in this uh, space, like a Mitsubishi, perhaps, or a Mitsui, but Iwatani certainly does have a role to play um, in enabling this, and, and we've been invited, um, as many others have, in these hydrogen hubs. So um, what are some lessons learned and some opportunities that we might want to share uh, with, with other companies? Um, how, how do Japanese companies, uh, banks, um, other uh, multinational uh, companies participate. Well, there's 
a massive demand for capital. And Japan is the number one foreign direct investor in California, as we, we are pretty much aware. But when you look at some of the direct investments and as well as the project financing that's going on, JBIC and others are providing a substantial amount of capital to be able to uh, help companies grow and fund and, and along the way, be able to transfer knowledge and learn and gather information exactly the way Ohirsan talked about as part of Japan's program of gathering information. Um, there's also making US partners. Um, I use the example of Chevron. We think that there's an opportunity uh, like that for many companies to be able to bring our strengths and our experience sets together and uh, create a fusion for growth. Um, I mentioned Toyota. Uh, that was a, a massive door opener for us to, to introduce ourselves. We had to deliver, of course, but um, the fact is uh, we were given the benefit of uh, support and it was huge. The, uh, the Department of Energy is doing everything possible to talk about hydrogen hubs and in gathering. This is a perfect opportunity for Japanese companies to participate. So many states are vying for hydrogen hubs, it creates a platform for investment across a wide range uh, uh, for companies with different technologies to be able to participate. There's massive projects and there's small projects. Um, the massive projects we know about are carbon sequestration, um, some of the storage domes uh, that are, are in Texas, for, for example, uh, as well as in Utah and other, other states, and then the infrastructure programs. These are multi-decade programs, but they're substantial uh, ways for, for companies to participate. Um, there's also startups. There are so many hydrogen startups uh, out there that companies are looking for not just capital, but also expertise. And I think this is an opportunity for Japanese companies and the members to be able to share um, where they bring value, what their expertise is, uh, how do they open doors to create value, just like a private equity group would try to do. Um, or venture capital firm. These are opportunities uh, as well. And then just the obvious areas, um, equipment and sales and aftermarket support. I can tell you um, there's not a lot of aftermarket support. There's a number of companies out there who are trying to sell equipment, but there isn't the aftermarket support. And that's another area where uh, companies can certainly um, uh, create a platform for growth. And it's one that we're participating in. All of the discussion tends to talk around how do we make hydrogen and how do we get it to where it needs to go. I wanted to leave you here with, we need demand creation too. And so the opportunities for further consumption, so products that are going to utilize either um, hydrogen through direct combustion or through hydrogen fuel cells or other mechanisms, demand creation is what's going to de-risk a lot of these projects and is going to absolutely create more investment. And then finally, um, the hydrogen trade groups, um, there's advocacy memberships. And of course, um, we're, we're very grateful for the support that we've re received from Meti, Neto, and uh, Jetro. So those are some comments. And, and I really appreciate, again, the opportunity to be able to share them with you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Kapalasan, uh, for introducing the work of Iwatani. Um, clearly, it's an important. Uh, company in, in moving forward Japan's uh, plans for the hydrogen society and you're doing a great uh, great work for, for developing things here in the US as well so it's clearly a, a, a situation where there are many winners so thank you for sharing thank you um, so clearly as I said there's a strong collaboration here between uh, Japan's public and private sectors on, on these uh, hydrogen initiatives and, and we'd like to explore that that further and also uh, how that impacts the US as well as Japan so uh, ohira san uh, can you uh, rejoin us here on the screen? Very good. So um, I should say we, we're certainly looking for any questions you might have um, from, from the audience as well, but, but I'd like to start with a few general questions uh, for, for our two panelists here, for uh, uh, Joe and uh, Eddie, if I may call you that, Eddie. <laughs> um, so the first one was, how do you see the, the prospect for US-Japan bilateral collaboration in hydrogen? And, and obviously, Joe, this, this sort of builds on what you were all already discussing. Do you have a vision for how this is going to progress? Thank you for the question. Well, uh, there's the insight that I'd share is really, frankly, that the US government has made no secret 
uh, of its interest in wanting to collaborate with Japanese companies. Uh, the Biden administration is a substantially uh, large supporter of J Japan uh, trade and also of hydrogen. So with that, and by extension, the Department of Energy um, have been exceptionally supportive and encouraging to Japanese companies for uh, investment. The state of California, as an example, um, had planned uh, a trade mission to visit Japan. Uh, it was canceled in March and postponed, perhaps is the better uh, word. But there was a, a large delegation that was being developed to be able to come over. We have mm -hmm. lots of deals that are being um, constructed between uh, companies in Japan, the the the, the various government programs uh, that are in place in, in Japan with uh, California-based companies. So pretty substantial um, growth and a, and a pretty substantial uh, uh, desire for cross-border uh, and, and bilateral trade, uh, for sure. I, I'd, I'd be interested to hear what Ohira-san thinks. Absolutely. Yeah, come on, Eddie, what, uh, what do you see? Yeah, and there's also many, I mean, options to, to cooperate between the U.S. and Japan. Uh, we and NATO also better good cooperation and relationship with the U.S. Department of Energy, the DOE. Well, and uh, I, I showed that's a presentation about our current activity and the working in the Los Angeles, uh, <coughs> the sport of Los Angeles. But uh, um, to, I will discuss with uh, uh, to the U.S. expert about uh, the development in the giant hydrogen market. Which is in uh, developing a new market for heavy duty vehicle. Mm. Uh, spreading out the heavy duty vehicle, uh, not only technology de development fuel cell itself, but also we need to develop in a new uh, protocol, a new, new regulation, a new standard for the, uh, the hydrogen defueling protocol for the heavy duty. Vehicle. Right. Uh, we, uh, we just started to uh, have a research project for developing a new protocol for the heavy duty vehicle. We are uh, the next step to, to share our experience or to share our data for the for this standard. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, we we have the uh, fuel cell protocol for the passenger vehicle based on the United States and SAE. But the next step is uh, we also need to develop the new standard for defeating protocol heavy duty. This is mm -hmm. one of the options. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as options, yes, the, the demonstration. Well, and uh, our Los Angeles project is rated by the uh, uh, Japanese company, but based in the United States, like uh, Toyota Motor America, and uh, Hino America, or uh, Toyota Tsushu. Right, and these are our US based company also they seeking the new business chances. So we, under, we have the chance to opportunity to cooperate with the Japan, US based Japanese company well, uh, to develop the new uh, uh, to collaborate with the project. In the Los Angeles, to, to Los Angeles project, we are the, to uh, preparing this project over the two um, two uh, two years. Well, and uh, this kind of the status, <clears throat> but it it means um, to we are uh, to ready to to start and uh, uh, discuss with the development of new property project. Great, thank you very much. So I guess we've focused there on the, the sort of bilateral situation between the US and China, uh, US, sorry, US and Japan. Um, looking even broader than that, how do you see the, uh, the global hydrogen market over the next 10 years? Any, uh, any perspective from your expectations within uh, Iwatani and, and from the, the NATO uh, perspective? Maybe Joe, you first. Sure. Um, well, I have to say Japan was early and out of the gate first and mm. really substantial. Europe has really caught up. Uh, in fact, uh, Europe is, 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 is leading now, I would say. Uh, it's mm. even uh, ahead of right. California at this pace. The momentum that's in place, um, uh, you know, geopolitical uh, uh, effects that are taking place right now aside for the moment, um, mm -hmm. The momentum in Europe um, was very strong. The technology mm -hmm. uh, advancement, if you look at the technology, a lot of it's originating in Europe. Uh, and then that's one thing. The second thing I would say is the um, conversion realities are, are much greater. Uh, mm -hmm. If you look at the cost of transportation fuels in Europe as compared with the US, the propensity for transition is, is even higher, just economics. Um, 
and and the willingness uh, for um, uh, climate change is that just has quite a bit of momentum uh, in Europe. So I would say Europe is is uh, leading right now, and we have some catching up to do, frankly. But it creates opportunities as well um, to be able to uh, invest directly um, for our company into Europe as other companies. Um, you're seeing Japanese companies uh, post up uh, across Europe, Germany in particular. And we think that um, there's going to be even more opportunities for technology uh, leveraging and further collaborations, particularly with uh, European countries. Maybe I'll throw in, that there's a question in the chat here, which sort of relates to this in a general sense. Do, do you see that recent geopolitical developments, you know, that greater feelings of energy insecurity and so on as a result of the, the situation in Eastern Europe in particular, um, do you see that causing things to move even faster? Any thoughts and on that? Uh, we do. Um, and, you know, it's it's unfortunate, and and just uh, I think we're all on the same page with this. It's it's a mm -hmm. very unfortunate situation, but it it, it highlights the uh, importance of of energy de independence yeah. and um, being able to secure it. And hydrogen is one of those fuels that you can make on purpose, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we have ways to be able to uh, move um, LNG around the world. We, um, it's not. Uh, by, it's not the most green at the moment, but renewable mm. natural gas, LNG, um, electrolyzers, um, all their options for uh, reforming uh, feedstocks. So I, I, long story short, yes. Yes, <laughs> fair point. Okay, Eddie, your, your thoughts. Yeah, and the uh, so next thing is but quite very important, mm. important for us. Yes, yeah, so we have the fuel cell, fuel cell vehicle. Yeah, fuel passenger vehicle, fuel buses, any fuel application, and and there's a huge movement, a uh, huge, huge investment, and in mm. just started in the northern United States, like uh, Nikola, uh, Nikola, Nikola Motors, and uh, Rag Power, or any other uh, aggressive activity in in uh, Europe, and mainly focus on the water and horizon. But uh, I I would say that the market, the hydrogen market, is not not yet mature. That's a uh, kind of effort uh, to ensure uh, this. Uh, market it's needed in a 10 years well, I, I mean that's that I would say that the next 10 years it's quite important uh, to develop the uh, hydrogen market in in the world uh, I would say that there's no or, or no competition in in, in the 10 years past the next 10 years is we need a collaboration uh, mm -hmm. to develop the new market well um well and so many kind of kind of research are quite important but uh and uh, activity at uh, technological develop the uh, technological demonstration in the real real fields in the real environment quite more important in the next next 10 years mm -hmm. i would say that scaling up project uh, will be start and um, to, uh, to in, in realize that 10 years of a large scale particles and megawatt 100 megawatt particles and sometimes gigawatt particles project mm -hmm. Well, as, as I mentioned, that we have large scale hydrogen transportation and 100 times bigger than the current hydrogen and the current level. Well, this kind of a huge spread in, in the starting in, in all over the world to ensure the market. Sure. Okay. So, so sort of related to this, um, we've talked about globally, we've talked about US and, and uh, Japan. Do you see growing competition from European governments and businesses as a, as a potential concern to, to plans in Japan for development? Do you see that as a challenge or do you see it as more collaborative? I guess start with you, Eddie, this time. I started with, uh, with Joe the last couple of times. Yeah, I think I had to mention that, not, not competition now. We no. need to cooperation. cooperation. And I, I, I talked about in, in my, my past answer, and we need to develop the kind of regulation the code and standard. That's we need to develop the uh, defeating the protocol for the heavy vehicle. We're also working for uh, for the uh, new regulation for hydrogen international transportation. That mm -hmm. I have so I my best for regulation. And yeah, mm -hmm. there's a stronger uh, European country and working for the hydrogen. But we are very much welcome for many many uh, to be company <clears throat> to be joining this uh, hydrogen field. It's quite mm -hmm. important. No single country developing the hydrogen as a society and the hydrogen market. And uh, if, if the many countries uh, working this this uh, uh, the area for hydrogen society, is realized. Mm. 
So you see a lot of the collaboration around standards, right. generating standards and protocols. Yeah. yeah. Joe, your thoughts on that? And we'll have to I, close with this, I'm afraid. But. Sure. No, very quickly, I'll echo. I think the um, the barrier is the um, right now that we have different codes and standards, and we yeah. need a harmonization. Sure. Um, and once the harmonization takes uh, hold, then we'll be able to see companies being able to transfer technology and be able to adopt lots of different technologies that uh, today is, is, is a bit of a challenge. So it's a, it's a great opportunity, I think. So standardization, I think you're both saying, really is a, is a, a linchpin, if you like, for international collaboration. We've, we've got to be working to the same, to the same basic concepts, same basic principles. Yeah. Okay, well, I think at this point, uh, we've pretty much run out of time for our discussion. Um, does it go back to you, Patsy, or who, who takes over from here? I'll take over from here. Thank you, Okita san yep. Propello san for the insightful presentations. It really is encouraging to hear how your efforts are taking hydrogen from news to reality, as you mentioned, Mr. Capello. Gratitude Thank is you. also owed to Dr. Rossiter for leading this evening's thought-provoking discussion. There's certainly more that could be discussed today on hydrogen, and we look forward to exploring this topic further. Hopefully, I know Okita san will be able to bring you to Houston to speak in mm. person here. To stay informed of Japan-related hydrogen ongoings, please follow the, the NIDA website. Also, to learn more about the hydrogen economy, please follow UH Energy of the University of Houston. The websites um, are found on your screen here. Again, Josh is grateful to the Embassy of Japan in Washington, D.C. and the National Association of Japan America Societies for making this program possible and joining us for closing remarks from the National Association of Japan America Societies is President Peter Kelly. Peter, the screen is yours. Thank you, Patsy. I'm Kelly of the National Association of Japan America Societies. I wish I could be there with you in, in, uh, in Houston. I think we... Uh, we, we, we all would like to, uh, to have had this happen at the, uh, at the Petroleum Club, but um, there are 38 Japan America societies all around the United States, four in, in, in Texas, and all of them, like the Japan America Society of Houston, are locally managed, locally funded organizations, not-for-profits, which work to deepen the relationship between the U.S. and Japan at the local level. It's the largest private network supporting a U.S. bilateral relationship, of any U.S. bilateral relationship. At NAGIS, our job, the National Association of Japan America Societies, we're headquartered in Washington, D.C. But our job is to try and help our members strengthen that network by providing Japan-related programs, which our members might not be able to organize on their own. We offer programs, public uh, program series in public affairs, geostrategy, two business speaker series, a cultural program, and a security program. All of those are offered competitively to our members with sponsorship from interested uh, organizations. When I say competitively, I have to congratulate the Japan America Society of Houston and, and Patsy, not only for this event, but for competing successfully for the grant, all of those grant programs that I just mentioned. Tonight's is the uh, public affairs program, the Japan Currents. In the Japan Currents Program, which is funded by two, two NAGIS by the Embassy of Japan in Washington, D.C., we focus on public affairs in each, of the, each society. There are 10 of these programs taking place between Jan, January and March all over the United States. And this is actually the 10th of 10, so it completes the series. In this situation, in this uh, public affairs series, each local society chooses its own theme of interest in the U.S. and Japan relationship. The speakers are uh, represent a Japanese perspective and a U.S. perspective, and where better where better to listen to a talk about energy than in Houston? In previous Japan currents in Houston, we've covered uh, the oil industry and the energy industry in different aspects, including LNG exports to Japan, which are even more important now than they used to be. And tonight, to delve into hydrogen, which uh, our speakers have talked about as being in the next 10 years are going to be a very interesting uh, part of the, of the uh, global energy supply will be the future of hydrogen. So we appreciate the, 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 um, the speakers joining us, the selection of this topic by the Japan America Society of Houston, and we appreciate the support of the Embassy of Japan to help bring you these, uh, these events. 
And uh, Patsy, I do look forward to next year's Japan Currents in person in Houston. Thank you. Peter, we look forward to welcoming you back to Houston and um, enjoying your company at the Petroleum Club. Um, we do appreciate all that you do, Peter, for the Japan America Society of Houston and our fellow members of the National Association of the Japan America Societies. In addition to Japan Currents, Japan America Society of Houston hosts a variety of Japan-related programs and activities throughout the year. Please visit the JASH website and our social media portals to stay up to date on upcoming events. Of particular note, we hope that you will join us for the return of the Texas Japan Business Leaders Roundtable. In April, we will be featuring Tokyo Marine HCC CEO Susan Rivera and G-Cube CEO McLaughlin Frazier discussing renewable energy insurance. In May, we'll see JARA America CEO Stephen Wynn discuss the company's recent growth. As you leave today's webinar, we ask that you take a moment to complete the post-event survey that will pop up on your screen. And if you're unable to view or access the survey, we will share it again through email in the coming days. This concludes the presentation. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Special thanks once again to our speakers, A.G. Ojeda, Joe Capello, and Dr. Alan Rossiter. Thank you all. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Arigato gozaimashita. Thank you, everyone. Yes, Thank you. thanks. Thanks, Patti. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.